Well, hello and uh, welcome for today's well, not exactly episode stream for the uh, BN tournament. We have the finals of the Gold League here. It's a best of seven, I think, and we have NF Baton or Baton for you uh, who speak Ukrainian or Russian against Artem Pro from Union in a 15 piece time right now. And we have 5,000 resources each. And it's Algeria for the first game, so I think that we can see a lot of archers, maybe even infantrymen. Though considering the peacetime, yes, infantrymen, I suppose. A lot of fodder, a lot of archers, might be a good idea. Maybe even pipemen to overwhelm enemy infantry. We'll see how that works. We have two of, of certainly the top five players here, with, with Barton and the uh, Well, it should be interesting. I, I'm sure that we'll have some uh, interesting things to see here today. And instantly, uh, Baton goes for t three town holds and quick, quick gold mines. Artem Pro also goes for the same strategy apparently, but he gets gold a little bit later because he apparently doesn't see it instantly. Fair enough, can't always see it instantly. Sometimes the gold spawns are a little bit, um, mm, well, they are always in another, in, in another spot. From the looks of it, Baton goes for a food economy, but I'm not sure right now. He certainly goes for pikemen right now. Well, it's Pro instantly goes for infantrymen. I don't know if that's going to be a standard with him. If he's gonna change later, this is just some scouts, I don't know. Maybe, though, maybe he goes for pikes, I don't know. He certainly has some Mamluks, so he's going to try and go for cavalry dominance I suppose. I think, I'm not sure I don't play Algeria or Turkey that much, but I think that the uh, Mamluk is better than uh, the Swahi, the Sipahi. At least the light one, about the heavy one, I'm not quite sure. Some uh, killing of Mamluks and, and infantrymen going around because uh, Artem Pro scouts directly into Vaten's base with them. Quite the loss, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. There's still plenty of time left to make more Mamluks. And Vaten still doesn't have a stable, he builds this just now. So, um. So, yeah, he's going to make some as well. Probably not as many as Artem Pro, but he's still gonna have a nice amount, and if he uses them smart with upgrades and stuff, he's going to be more effective. Maybe that was all Python's plan, plan from the beginning, to make a better economy, so he can spend the resources later on more barracks and stables than Artem Pro does. Because Atom Pro spent his initial initial resources all on recruitment buildings like stables and barracks. Maybe that's his plan. We'll see. Artem Pro builds a lot of houses, reasonable because he makes a lot of infantry, but also crippling his economy a little bit. He might have... well, Novaton has two barracks and makes two times infantry men than uh, Artem Pro does, whereas Artem Pro still only has one barrack. So we can see that Baton's strategy is already kind of paying off here. He has another barrack and thus can easily and quickly outproduce Artem Pro. 
White Sergeant Pro is using his Mamluks to, uh, uh, or his right now, his Mamluk superiority to fight with Baton in, in, in the neutral fields. Though I don't think that neutral control is actually a thing here. So now Baton has escaped his Mamluks into his own territory. I don't know why they clash in a neutral territory. Nobody goes for neutral control, thus I think it is uh, disallowed or prohibited in that case. It's a strange thing, but I think they will have their reasons. Maybe they are uh, trying to scout each other out or trying to set up, an, set up an ambush attack for after the peacetime. Both would be quite possible, though the latter seems a little bit more reasonable in my opinion. Artempro has the second barrack, he has a diplomatic center too, while Vaiten built his third barracks. In return he doesn't have a diplomatic center just yet, but that should follow soon I bet. Yeah, Baton's resources look pretty good for a diplomatic center that should come up soon, so we shouldn't have to worry about that either. Atom Pro has almost 300 more units on... well, does have 300 more units on Baton. That doesn't mean a lot though, because his economy is a little bit worse than Baton's. So he should be... Uh, not all too clumsy with that. Atom Pro builds Grenadiers. Probably, not probably, a good choice if he would use them like I would. But I don't think so. I think that most people would prefer to use them as a, dist as a distance support unit, which is fair enough. I don't uh, judge that. But I personally, due to the high melee, melee attack, would rather use them as a melee support unit. You know, send in your infantry and then micro your Grenadiers after them so the enemy infantry will just get mowed down. Two hits from a, from a bayonet and they are dead. At least when they are not upgraded. When they are upgraded they might, just, they might probably tank three hits but uh, the damage is still huge. Which means that this is uh, a nice benefit. I'm not sure why Baton has made pikemen when he is going for inventorymen instead. Maybe they are some kind of support unit because of their longer attack range, maybe they are supposed to beer up some infantrymen. In the meantime, Baton is trying to counter Artem Pro's uh, Mamluk superiority with some mercenary dragoons. Not many, it seems like, but a few. Well, he's producing a lot more, actually. Yeah, he's producing uh, a total of 100, which is uh, a lot. Artem Pro also built some mercenary dragoons, and he builds a total of 120, which is more, and might actually be more efficient with his current numerical advantage above Baton. So, uh, I'd be careful, but also not too careful, because if that would be the case, something might happen, which is pretty bad. But that's, that's not, let's not hope on that. A good frontal attack with infantrymen, dragoon support behind them and mamluks from the side or concentrate onto one part of the enemy army then push them from the from this side upwards or downwards considering where the enemy army is left over should be fairly destructive. Simply because of the combined force of forces of all your mamluks combined into one very tight blob pushing onwards, so pushing against the enemy 
stretched out line of infantrymen, and infantrymen aren't too good against cavalry at all, especially not Mamluks, which have a nice armor against swords. But that would be a, a disaster if that would happen. For each of the players, of course. If Atom Pro manages to pull this on Baton, probably Baton is gonna lose because Atom Pro has way more men, but if Baton pulls this off properly, then he has a good shot a good shot on winning. But considering both armies are very spread out, because they are uh, not very keen on using formations apparently, apart from Baton, he is using some formations. I think that's the square formation. Or is that just the line? I think that's a line formation. Oh! And from the looks of the battlefield, the line formation isn't isn't the worst idea, to be honest. Adam Pro does have cannons. And Baton is hiding behind the hill to avoid these cannons. So he's uh, trying to preserve his men somehow. Atom Pro has way more cannons and Atom Pro appears to make a big push for it. And Baton just retreats. Fair enough, I guess. But now Atom Pro takes the hill and takes an easy easy position to shoot onto on down on Baton on. And now Baton is engaging with Atom Pro. Good ideas are used as a as a rain port unit. It doesn't look good for Baton though. Well actually it does look it does look very good for Baton. He's just running over the grenadiers and some Dragoo with infantry. He lost his numbers, but that's a relatively low sacrifice. He still has his mercenary dragoons which can deal a lot of damage in a very short time. He got a shrapnel shot into his side into the side of his infantry formation, but in return he took Atom Pro's cannon because he, he Atom Pro deleted his other two cannons. And now this is where it gets interesting because no none of the players really has an army left. They both only have their main dragoons left. Well, most of them, but well, no, 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 rather some of them. Baton's just died from the southern push, and Atom Pro's just died from the northern push. Oh, Baton taking another shot or hit into the Dragoon. Nasty. But Atom Pro's very much on the back foot. Would be a wonder if he could still pull this around, but even if he would send his peasants in, it, it looks pretty hopeless at this point. Not impossible though. Well, apparently it does look impossible because he just said that uh, GG. And for all of you that have joined, and before you ask again, which somebody always asks, I'm not Hall of It. I am Imperator Ricardo. I'm not British. I'm not even English. I'm not even England. Oh, well, now we are soon going to move on to the next battle. With this one over, it says 1 to 0 for, for Bacon. I can't, can't believe I call him Bacon all the time. I always call him Bacon, because Bacon is good. Anyway, let's wait for the next battle and see how that works.